Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Actually, welcome to Fred's Garage, but this is Mike at Fred's Garage. The best part about Fred is that his name isn't Mike like everyone else. It's not true, but his name is Fred. Anyway, this is Fred's Panhead, and if you look back at our at our um, our home page on our on our YouTube channel, there's a pic pictures of three different engines there. One of them is my knucklehead, one of them is my shovelhead, the other one is Fred's 48 Panhead. So, it's kind of neat stuff. It's been around quite a while. Fred built it from the ground up, and it is gorgeous. Fred, I know it's a part right now, but you can still show it a little bit. It, we'll show it all in its entirety soon. I would like to say, though, if you have already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do, and when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified each and every time we put up a new video. Thank you for that. Um, anyway, I'm Fred and I were going to go for a ride the other day, and he called me up and he said, well, i got to go back and change bikes. My panhead is not uh, cooperating. Okay, so I came over to look at it, and what we have, he brought another bike, we had a good time. What we have here is a clutch that sat too long, and I think Fred's son might have changed the oil in this transmission for him. And he overfilled it, and all the oil came through the main shaft of the transmission and onto the clutch. And this happened over a matter of time because the bike was sitting for quite a while as Fred was doing some other work to it. Probably some, oh I know what he was doing, he was working on the front end. So the bike sat for quite a while and the oil just kept on seeping right down the main shaft and into the clutch. So the whole clutch was just a real sticky, gooey, messed up thing. So I took it all apart and I cleaned it. And I want to go back through as to what changes I did to it, and maybe there's something here to be learned from it. But anyway, here it is. Um, I did put a new seal in the clutch hub nut. Actually, I put double seals because it is a deep enough machine surface that I can put two seals in there. A lot of, a lot of guys do that. A lot of people do that. It's, it's just something you can do, make it seal a little better. The other thing I did was yell and scream at Fred to please never overfill the transmission again. <laughs> anyway, so that's how that is. By the way, Fred is our, our, our entire art department. Any, any still pictures we do, any pictures that we'll be having out soon, he does. He does a lot of our stuff. And if we actually do, which is pretty rare, but we actually do any editing on our videos, Fred does those. So here we are, back at Fred's Clutch. That's what we're doing. You'll notice everything is fairly new here. This bike is basically a new build. It's been over quite a, uh, a length of time, but it's, it, it's never really received a whole lot of miles on it yet. So everything is like top quality and pretty much new. So I washed all this stuff up, and I wanted to show the inside of this belt drive basket. I think this is a Primo Rivera, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, this surface in the clutch basket gets really scarfed up and ugly. And if your clutch pack, if you can put a clutch pack together that isn't too thick when you're all done, you can fit it all in here with an extra plate. And what it is, is I take an old clutch steel, one of the old steel plates, and I knock all the buffers off of it, and I round all the edges on the inside, and what you end up with is a steel backing plate, a perfectly smooth steel backing plate in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that together now. I'm going to put the basket on first. We loosened all this stuff up to get it off, and that's what we've been doing, is sliding it on and off. And let's see. Well, that didn't work very well. 
get the front pulley on there, or the belt onto the front pulley. And then, we we'll get this this belt on here. Now I did this a while ago. I know I did. There it is. I can just get it onto the bearing. Like that. And there it is. Okay, now that it's on, I have a... I think after market, market suppliers are still carrying these, this is a ramjet retainer. And I use these, I love these, and I'm going to put this one on. There's three positions that sets this thing at different depths. And what you're doing is you're keeping this clutch basket from wobbling when you're sitting at a stoplight. Now I tried it off camera so I wouldn't waste too much time. But what I did was I found the B position was the right one. So I had three little keepers that were laying right here that don't seem to be there. Here they are. Okay. Now Fred knows where things are like Mike does, so he's doing good. So there's uh, these little sir clips, and you just slide it right in there, and it'll get into the notch or the groove that's in the... Uh, the three clutch adjusting studs. So there's one. Now let me show something just for fun because people ask me this one on a regular basis. These little snap rings are stamped and one side is perfectly flat, the edges are sharp, the other side is rounded. So if I put this one in with the sharp side out, it's going to snap in and hold that part in there the way I want it to. So you want to pay attention to what direction you put snap rings on. See what you want it to do. This one is on. And it snapped into place beautifully. So we got one more. And I'll get it on there. There it goes. I can take this little pick. I tell you, getting them out, you want to have a pair of snap ring pliers. Or you'll end up doing it with picks and things. Okay, so all three of these are in place. And you can see how this thing sits perfectly flat as you rotate the clutch hub. And that's what it was invented, what that retainer was invented to do. That was invented by a guy by the name of Roger Chatelet. And I met him back in the early 80s when he was showing it to shops. Anyway, this is that steel plate that I made, that I made, that I modified. And there it is. It's smooth on this side, and the other side is just going to lock in place and not do anything. Except sit there and not let the uh, clutch basket get all scarfed up. Now, as I put these plates back in, Whoever manufactured this particular set, I'm not going to use any names, but they didn't put out on the out on the side that's supposed to face out. We want these buffers facing in this direction. And we're going to put them in there now, going that way. But most of the steel plates will say out on them. 
that one's got in there in the right place. And that's in there. Now as I put these back in, I want to stagger these buffers every other plate so that they're not in the same place and hit each other as the clutch is functioning. Okay. And this one here, I want to stagger it over to there. And this one here, this is the half plate that goes on the outside. And now we have the uh, pressure plate here we'll put on. Releasing disc. Okay. And let's see, we have three studs here. Three studs, where is it? There, okay. And there it is on. Okay, let's put the, uh, the nuts on it. Now, again, <laughs> it's almost an experiment every time when you're stacking things a little taller. This is the early type clutch. It uses a half plate in it which is this here. It has fiber on the inside, but just steel on the outside because it doesn't spin against anything. It spins with this big releasing disc. So, there it is. And we'll make it all work. Putting these nuts on here. There's two of them, and there's three of them. Now, this is not a factory Harley-Davidson releasing disc. I think this is one of those that was made by Andy Hansen in the old days, by HES Products. And I'm sure other people are making them now. Andy passed away a few years ago. But it was a nice invention because he made an aluminum releasing disc that is machined perfectly flat. And it really makes things nice for alignment. The only problem is when you're setting this up as per the factory specifications, the factory called out one inch from the releasing disc to this piece here, this collar, which they call the pressure plate. Well, with a flat steel releasing disc in here, and you're measuring off the flat part of that out to here, one inch was a fine measurement. But this aluminum disc, the hole in it for the springs to drop in right here, I measured it is 330 some thousandths, which would mean that the measurement we want here is 67.67. .67. In other words, if we take 0.33 from 100, we end up with 0.67. So that's allowing for the depth of this spring pocket in here. So now I've got all these on here. I'm going to take this part apart. Oh, I think I can do it even better here. Let's see. If I get this screwdriver, I think it was this one, and I put it right here. Then I can do this, like this. And we'll have it off of here in a second. How about that? I have a much better washer for Fred here, and I will give it to him later. I usually use a shovel head valve spring retainer for holding my releasing disc together. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to leave this not completely adjusted. I think I'll back off on it a little more, but, wait a minute, that's not the right screwdriver. I think, no. Hmm. 
Maybe it is. Okay. Let's put that back on there. And we can do some other little things just to check it out before we can let this thing go. There we go. Okay, we'll back off on that adjusting screw. And I want to check and see. Let me use this measuring device here. We'll zero it out. We'll turn it on. That's... Let's see. And there it is. We're very close on that measurement. So all we'll need to do is just make sure that it's straight all the way around. And then we'll be able to set it. Now I wanted to say that the transmission is still loose in here because we had to loosen it up to get the belt drive apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to readjust that transmission in the chassis so that we have a little more, little more slack in this thing. What uh, Primo Rivera used to say was to set this belt up so that you could twist it from horizontal to vertical. That was loose enough. And that's important. So that's going to need to be done. So we'll get that transmission tied down tight and get the right amount of play in this. Then we'll adjust the rear wheel to the right amount of slack in the chain. Then we'll get the clutch adjusted. And then we'll adjust the, sh the shifter. But actually, this is what Fred needed help with. He got his help, and I'm going to leave it to him. So we'll be doing something else real soon. You know, Born Free is coming up, and maybe we'll go visit somebody that's putting a bike together for Born Free. I don't know. We'll see. But until then, I'll see you out on the road.